Aspirin was first manufactured in the 19th century, but its herbal precursor has been used for 2,000 years. By the mid-20th century, aspirin was the best-selling painkiller. In the 1970s, its antithrombotic effects were discovered, and it became the standard platelet inhibitor for patients with coronary disease and vascular disease. Later on, studies even suggested it can prevent cancer. With all these health benefits being cheap with few side effects, aspirin was in every house. And because it does cut one quarter of the death in patients with acute myocardial infarction, it was intuitive to use it for prevention of cardiovascular disease, even in healthy individuals. Some studies actually supported that practice. But in the 21st century, we realized that aspirin is a gastric irritant, it can cause bleeding, we have better painkillers and more potent platelet inhibitors, and we started questioning these marvelous effects of aspirin. So what's the truth about aspirin? Should people above the age of 40 who do not have cardiac disease or vascular disease take aspirin to prevent heart attacks and strokes or not? We will get to the answer within a few minutes. I'm Sin Hishmet, Professor of Cardiology and Interventional Cardiologist, and welcome to my channel. This episode, we will discuss the latest report on aspirin prepared by the United States Preventive Service Task Force and published in JAMA on April 26th. The United States Preventive Service Task Force is an independent panel of experts in prevention. The members come from different specialties. The panel issues recommendations based on rigorous review of evidence to decide whether a service is suitable to prevent or not. The task force sends a report annually on its recommendations to the U.S. Congress. I will add a link to their website uh, in the description, but f in this episode, we'll focus on their recommendations on aspirin. <music> Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of mortality globally, with nearly 18 million deaths every year. Preventing this is a priority for the entire humanity. We have two types of prevention. Secondary prevention and primary prevention. Secondary prevention means preventing an event in someone who already got the disease. You already got angina, myocardial infarction, cardiac surgery, stroke, and this is beyond the scope of this recommendation. Aspirin is beneficial, it's proven, it's beyond doubt. So if you are a patient and you're taking aspirin, please don't stop it. If you have questions on aspirin, please consult your treating doctor. On the other hand, primary prevention is preventing an event in someone who's healthy, who never had coronary disease or vascular disease. Primary prevention also includes those who do not have the clinical disease, but have risk factors for the disease. For example, advanced age, hypertension, diabetes, high cholesterol, and smoking. The task force recommendations of aspirin are specific to adults, 40 years or older, without signs or symptoms of cardiovascular disease or known cardiovascular disease, not at increased risk for bleeding, no history of gastrointestinal ulcers, recent bleeding, or taking a drug that can promote bleeding. What did the U.S. Preventive Service Task Force do, and what did it find? First, the task force commissioned a systematic review of 13 randomized clinical trials involving more than 160,000 participants studying the effects of aspirin, on the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease, myocardial infarction, stroke, cardiovascular mortality, and all-cause mortality. They found that in adults 40 years or older who have no history or clinical cardiovascular disease, but are at increased risk because of hypertension, diabetes, smoking, etc., aspirin resulted in a 12% reduction in myocardial infarction and 12% reduction in stroke, but no difference in death. The benefits of aspirin were bigger in those individuals with higher cardiovascular risk, particularly if the 10-year risk of events is 15% or 20% or more. This seems good. The bad thing that this, some trials show that aspirin increased major gastrointestinal bleeding by 58% and intracranial bleeding by 31%. And the risk again increases with age, becoming more above the age of 60. And the panel did not any, find any conclusive evidence on the effects of aspirin on colorectal cancer. Then the task force commissioned a microsimulation modeling study to assess the net balance and benefits 
benefits and harms of aspirin at different ages and in different cardiovascular risks. The model shows negative numbers above the age of 60 and the negative number mean years of life lost. So aspirin is dangerous when started above the age of 60 for primary prevention. Between the age of 40 and 59, the numbers are positive, but the magnitude of benefit is small. At best, it's five years in every 100 individuals treated with aspirin, even when they are high risk. What's the final recommendation? For adults who are 60 years or older with no cardiovascular disease, do not initiate aspirin for primary prevention. For adults from 40 to 59, we need to estimate the cardiovascular disease risk using the risk calculator, which considers age, gender, race, blood pressure, cholesterol, blood sugar, smoking. It's available online and you'll find the link in the description. If the estimated cardiovascular disease risk is less than 10%, again, do not initiate aspirin for primary prevention. If the estimated risk is 10% or greater, then you need to decide jointly with the patient. You take into consideration the benefits of aspirin, the hazards of aspirin, the reason behind taking aspirin, the patient's values and beliefs. If the patient decides and we decide to take aspirin, then 81 milligrams are enough. That's the first point to remember. The second point, if the patient goes to the reaches around 75 years, then we need to stop aspirin also for primary prevention because the risk of bleeding at that age would be high. I need to remind you again that these recommendations are for primary prevention. They do not apply for individuals who already have cardiovascular disease. Persons who are currently taking aspirin and have questions about why they're taking aspirin or whether to continue or discontinue aspirin should discuss these questions with their clinician. And persons taking aspirin should not stop using aspirin without consulting their clinician. If we really want to prevent cardiovascular diseases, we need to focus on the major risk factors of the disease, not on starting aspirin. Blood pressure control, new diabetes medication, lowering LDL cholesterol, smoke cessation, dash diet, physical exercise, Together, they can avoid 80% of the strokes and the MIs that we see. We need to focus on these risk factors, not on the aspirin pen. Thank you for watching. If you like the content, please give the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell to get an alert for the coming episodes and see you next week.